Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video, we're gonna continue from where we left off. Last time we set up this weapon holding system where you can see we can easily change weapon and as we shoot, you can see in the console it'll say which weapon we fired. So this now works nice and modularly. In this video, we are gonna continue on to picking up these weapons on the ground. Now you might notice I've taken the liberty of just setting up a quick crosshair. The crosshair is really very simple. It's just four images lined up in the size of a crosshair with the parent component and that's really it. The reason for this being, I just wanted to be able to see where we're looking when we're trying to pick up a weapon. Otherwise that can easily become very annoying. So continuing from where we left off, we first of all got to figure out if we want the player or the player weapon script to also handle picking up weapons or if we want another pickup script to handle that. Now, I don't imagine this becoming very large, but still, I think we should structure it properly and make a player pickup script here. So I'm going to make that and we're going to put that onto the player. Now, in this video, we're also, by the end of it, going to test whether things work in multiplayer. It's very likely that some things just won't work. That's multiplayer for you. And we're going to go back and fix what's not working. So let me go in here, player pickup and just remove this and now we've got to figure out what we want to pick up so for that sake how we want things to work when we pick up so first of all let's have a private float of some kind of pickup range which let's just set that to four now i also want a button for picking up so let's just make that changeable so private key code pickup key and let's just set that to key code e and then lastly we need some kind of layer mask so serialized field private layer mask and then pick up players like so now this also needs to be a network behavior because once again we need to disable it on other players so we're going to do another on start client and we're going to say if if or if we're not the owner we're going to say enable equals to false and we return now in the update loop we're going to check if we're repressing the pickup key so if input dot get key down the pickup key then something here will happen this is why I'll just make a new method called private void pickup and let's call that immediately. I'm sorry if it seems like I'm going a bit fast here, but this is really how I work with programming. I kind of just fire it off and then if it doesn't work, I go back and look at it again. <laughs> so that's why I'm just moving ahead here. All this stuff should be rather simple. Now in here we want a raycast. So if physics.raycast and we're going to raycast from our camera and forward. So let's for that sake just cache the camera for performance sake. So private, uh, let's just, yeah, let's cache it as transform, call that camera transform. And then in here we can say camera transform equals to camera main.transform. Now this is going to now cast the raycast from the camera transform dot position and it's going to do it in the direction of the camera transform dot forward and we're going to output the raycast hit call it hit then we're going to do it in the pickup range and we're going to be using the pickup layers like so and we can expand this now and now here we go we know that we're in here but what we could actually just do is we could just invert this and just say return that way it doesn't have to go in a layer now we know that when we press e on something we've hit something that we want to handle right so one thing is we want, we know that this player pickup script also needs to handle the player weapon script because we need to call the initialized weapons or sorry the initialized weapon here so let's actually make this one public because we will need to be calling this yeah we need to make some kind of connect the, the reason why i'm thinking is we need to make some kind of connect between this index and this list up here but we are gonna have to figure that one out in a second so in the player pickup now what we want to do is we want to check if the hit dot transform dot try get component and we try and get the a player weapon or oh, no sorry this needs to be a weapon on the ground which we want it to be another one so it's going to be a ground weapon which we're just going to refer to as ground weapon like so so if we've hit a ground weapon now let's go make this ground weapon actually so let's go to weapons let's make a new script call it a ground weapon this is also going to be a public abstract plus and this is most likely also going to be network behavior because we're going to want to remove it um i don't know if we actually want any rules in here yet but we might want to for the future that's why i'm just making an abstract class now uh, because we we might want them to have unique functionality it could honestly also just be a ground weapon that might like not an abstract class just be a generic weapon on the ground i don't see why we wouldn't want that um yeah you know what let's do that abstract class might be overkill here yeah. let's go back and just call it ground weapon like that and this is no matter what going to be a network behavior we want to be able to despawn it and now we just need to take the ground weapon like this and so if it is a ground weapon we now also want to have a reference to the player weapon script which we're just going to call underscore player weapon this one should be underscore camera transform like so just to keep it consistent with the naming and up here we should do if try get component out player weapon we're just going to call it p weapon and that's the underscore player weapon equals to p weapon like that and then let's just do an else statement just say debug.log error couldn't find player weapon on this game object like that so now we just have a nice error catching it just in case the things aren't set up correctly we'll now get a warning telling us it's not set up correctly now down here we now know it's a ground weapon now we know that we want to call the player weapon here 
and we want to call the initialize weapon function and we need to give it some kind of integer now we could just go a really cheap way and just set it up directly which i think we just are gonna do i'm not expecting this game to have a whole bunch of weapons so this should actually be just fine we just do a public integer that's just called weapon index and just set that equals to minus one by default and perhaps we should actually just make it private set like that there we go this just ensures that we can't accidentally change this index from what we set it to as an inspector and now in here we can just get the ground weapon dot weapon index like that. and i think that should work let's go and try it out so first of all we're going to make a new layer for these weapons on the ground let me go make a new layer all this ground weapon and add these to the layer uh sure change children and then we go on to the player now we have the pickup and we need the ground weapon as a pickup and we need to also add the indices to them so all of them needs the let's also just disconnect them from the prefabs here all of them need the ground weapon one now like that and oh okay i didn't actually realize private set also means we can't set an inspector let's just do it like this then i could probably do serialized field private set but this is fine so the pistol is zero the rifle was one and the shotgun was two now the reason why i know these numbers is if we go on to our player you can see we have element zero element one and element two being the pistol rifle and shotgun in that order so let's go test it now start the game go to the rifle press e and you can see now i picked up the rifle and you can see now it says rifle fired same if i pick up the shotgun and it just works now like that so now we can go back to the player weapon here and just remove all of these debugs and yeah now we have the base of a pickup system working we of course need wanted to despawn the ones on the ground uh, so let's do that so let's do that in the player pickup i guess we'd want to after interacting with it we just want to despawn it. so we want to call that as a server rpc it might actually be better to just do this on the weapon itself i think that should work fine so here when we hit it and it's a ground weapon what we can do is we can go into the ground weapon and we can say public it will return an integer and it'll say pick up weapon this will now return the weapon index but it'll also call to just destroy itself so it'll call a server rpc we don't require ownership private void despawn weapon there we go despawn weapon and we're just going to call server manager dot despawn and we're going to despawn the game object that we're on here and then this down here can just call despawn weapon like so now this pickup weapon can just be called in here instead so ground weapon dot pickup weapon like so and now it should despawn itself so what's happening here is we're calling it saying hey we want the integer back but at the same time of getting the integer we also just want to despawn the weapon let's check if this works as intended let me go over here pick up this and boom it despawned the weapon then with this and it despawned there we go and as we can see that now works and the debug for firing and stuff still works as well so this is very smooth now let's start getting tested with multiplayer so let me just open up parallel sync and let me make a clone and there we go the clone is now open uh, it's on the other screen so you can't see it right now but you can obviously see me move around here and you can see this works i'm trying to shoot on the other screen and it's not calling anything in this debug so that's disabled correctly you can obviously see that the weapons aren't initialized correctly we just have a full stack of weapons i imagine the same is if we just look down here and i go and try and pick up a weapon you're going to be able to see them disappear but you're obviously not going to see it initialized correctly so this is something that we need to sync but other than that everything seems to be working pretty well obviously the up and down isn't synced either this is something that we could do but i actually quite like this just general direction i think it works pretty nicely and yeah so let's work on just synchronizing the picking or the i guess the weapon changing on the player and then we should be good for this video now so it's on the player weapon we basically want to synchronize what's happening here i'm thinking one good way of doing this is since you're the owner we could have a synchronized variable that whenever that changes that whenever that changes which could be the weapon index we actually run this code okay so what we want to do is we want to make a synchronized value that when that changes it'll update the visually for everyone now i've just had that's why there was just a cut i've just had a learning experience because i'm running on fishnet 4.0 and apparently they removed sync bars or at least the sync bar attribute and the setup is now quite different so what we want to do now is we want to make a private read only sync bar of the type integer this is in 4.0 and we can just call this one the current weapon index which will just be a, a new default state which is just a sync bar of type in now that we have this in the awake method we can now take this and say on change we want to call some kind of 
method, which we, for example, could just call on current weapon index chain. And this is where we'd actually want to change the visuals of the web. So let's go and make this method. So private void on current change. This will now have the integer of old index, the integer of new index, and the bool of as server, uh, just like the old sync var setup. And now we can actually just move all of this in here. And we want to take the new index out with the weapon index. And we want to change the current weapon index here out for we want to do dot value equals to the weapon index. But this is why it's a little bit different because right now we would be doing this as a client, meaning it would work on the person who's the host, but it wouldn't work for the person who is not a host, which means just a regular client. We need to do that this through a server RPC. So what we can just do is we can make a server RPC that will just call something like private void uh, set weapon index, and it will just require that we add the weapon index and we can just set the value like this. This way we now call the weapon index like this. So we just say set weapon index and call it like that. And now it will be set on the server should be sent out to everyone who will then see the change and send it down here. And most importantly, right now it will default the value to zero. We want to default the value to negative one just to have it outside. So that way when we spawn and we set the index of zero, it won't be the same because then there would be no change. I hope that makes sense. So let's go and test this out and see how this works. We can see we spawned on the player and now he has the pistol in hand and let me go on the client and he also has the pistol in hand and they should also see the pistol for each other now if i stand here looking and this guy goes and picks up the ak for example you can now see he changed to the ak in the other player's hand same goes for the shotgun and same goes back for the pistol so now the change of the weapon actually synchronizes and that's really it for this video hopefully this was also a learning experience for you just as it was for me with the new sync bars and uh, yeah i really hope this helps out and i'm super excited to show you the next video and have a wonderful wonderful day